Hello everyone. Now that we have introduced the basic terminology of game theory, I'm going to introduce two famous games that will anchor our discussion as we move forward. The first one is called The Prisoner's Dilemma, and if you have heard of any one game in game theory, this would probably be the one. In the last video, I talked about three different components of games. We have our players, we have our strategies, and finally we have our payoffs. On the screen here I have a 2x2 two two grid, and I'm going to fill this out to talk about our three main components of games. The story of The Prisoner's Dilemma is that there are two criminals who committed a crime together. They got picked up by the police and thrown in separate cells. The police talk to each prisoner separately and do not allow the two prisoners to communicate with each other. They're each offered a deal. They can rat out the other player, which we call Fink, or they can stay silent. Both players then have the option to Fink or stay silent. If one player Finks and the other stays silent, the player who Finks is allowed to go free, whereas the silent player will get a long prison sentence. So, for example, if player 1 Finks and player 2 stays silent, player 1 gets to go free and gets 3 utility, whereas our silent player, who was finked on, gets the longest possible prison sentence, we'll say a utility of zero. When I draw this matrix, the lower left corner utility will be for player one, and the upper right corner utility will be for player two. I always set it up to, so that player one's strategies are the rows, and player two's strategies are the columns. On the other hand, if we look at what happens when player two finks and player one stays silent, then the utilities are reversed. Player one gets a zero utility, player two gets three utility. What happens when both prisoners stay silent? In this case, the police don't have enough evidence to convict either of them of the crime, but maybe they caught them in a small crime and can still hold them for a short prison sentence. This isn't too bad for the prisoners, but it's a little bit worse than going free, so they're both going to get two utility in that case. In our final corner here, what happens when both players fink? Here, both players get convicted and get a medium length prison sentence, which is not as bad as zero, but they get one and one. How does this all fit into our game theory framework? Well, our players are prisoner one and two. Our strategies, they're gonna be some combination of fink and silent, that's not to say that Fink and Silent are the only possible strategies. They could have contingencies where one prisoner could say, well, if the other one thinks I'm going to Fink, if they stay silent, I'm going to stay silent. So we can build up more complex strategies, but they're always going to come from those building blocks of the possible actions of Fink and Silent. Finally, the payoffs are given by our matrix. So we could write out all the different payoffs here in terms of the utilities. So for example, we could say the utility for player one for fink fink is one player one's utility from fink silent is three and so on we refer to this matrix here as a normal form game the next game we will talk about is called battle of the sexes in this game, our two players are a husband and wife who have decided to meet up to do something for the evening. For whatever reason, they did not decide where they would go ahead of time and are unable to communicate with each other. In this day and age, I guess this is kind of an unrealistic situation, but as we will see, the basic principles of this game transfer very well into a lot of different situations. First and foremost, both of the players want to actually meet up, and if they end up at different locations, they will get no utility out of it. So if player one goes to opera and player two goes to boxing, they both end up with zero utility. Likewise, if player two goes to opera, player one goes to boxing, again, we end up with zero and zero. If they do actually end up at the same location, they'll both get some utility out of that. But let's say that one of the players enjoys opera a bit more than the other. Player one will get two utility out of opera, player two will get one utility. If they both end up at boxing, then they will both get positive utility, but here, player one 
only gets one utility, whereas player two gets two utility. Looking at it from our game theory framework, we've got two players again, our husband and wife, who may be player one or player two, it doesn't really matter. Our strategies are going to involve some combination of going to opera or boxing. And our payoffs are given by our chart again, our normal form game matrix. For example, we would have a utility for player one of opera and opera is two. And we could go and do that for player two as well. Player two's utility for opera, opera now is one. And again, we can go through all the different combinations for each player and combination of actions to get our utilities. And that's going to be what our payoffs for this game are. 